The Nick Collection 3 is a suite of eight different software programs. Um, and so you got all these different programs here like Analog Effects Pro 2, HDR Effects Pro, Color Effects Pro, Vivesa, Silver Effects, man, all this really cool stuff. But today we're looking at uh, Vivesa, one of my very favorites. I've been using it since it came out. And I love it. And now the Nick Collection is normally $149. It is on sale right now for Black Friday. This is the Black Friday weekend. You can get it for 50% off. And that runs till Cyber Monday, November 30th. We're in the year 2020. If you click on my affiliate link in the description below, just click on the Nick Collection. Uh, I'll make a small commission. It helps me with my channel. And I really appreciate that when you do that, guys. It helps me to keep these tutorials coming to you. And I love making these tutorials. And I thank you for viewing and interacting with me. It's really great. So let's look at Vivesa 2. Let's see how powerful it is and how it can really speed up your workflow. Without any further ado, let's get started. Let me start out by saying I love Vivesa 2, man. It is uh, one of the quickest and easiest ways to edit images, truly. And I've been using it since its uh, inception when Nick first came out with it. And I just want to reintroduce you to it today. And... Uh, Let's just take a look at it and see the power of Vivesa 2. Now, this cool little tool right here is called the Nick Selective Tool. Now, you can take this and you can move it around anywhere you want inside of Photoshop. And by the way, I'm using uh, Nick as a uh, Photoshop plugin today, or Vivesa 2 as a Photoshop plugin. Uh, you can use all the Nick software as standalone uh, software as well if you'd like to, but I like to use it as a plugin. If you don't see this tool right here, you can come up to File in Photoshop and come down to Automate, and you'll find it right here, Nick Selective Tool 2. Just click on that, and that'll bring it up. Now, these are the icons for the different uh, applications that come with the Nick, Nick Collection. There's a lot of them here. And if you want to see the names of those, just click these uh, little two squares right here with the lines beside them. Click that, and there you go. There's all your different filters. By the way, you can work with the Nick Collection totally non-destructively. Uh, and to do that, what you would need to do, let me minimize this real quick here, is you'd have to duplicate your layer and just right-click it in Photoshop and convert it to a smart object. And now you'll be able to work non-destructively with any filter that you choose in the Nick Collection. I generally don't work with smart objects, but some of you guys really love smart objects and hey, to each his own, but I don't. But I'm going to show you something really cool. I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer. I don't have to duplicate my layer to work with Nick. It does it for me, which is nice. So let me open this back up again. And let's click on Vivesa 2. It'll make a layer for me right here, as you can see. And it opens up the Nick collection. And now let's get working with Vivesa 2. On the right side of the interface, we have a bunch of different controls. We have curves we can adjust. We have a loop down here. I'll show you how this really comes in handy in a second. You can click this icon to add a control point. You can also group control points or ungroup control points. And that's very handy. And I'll show you that coming up shortly. And in here lives all your adjustments. Now, right now it says global because we have not laid a control point down yet. So for instance, I can cut the brightness back if I want to. Whatever I want to do, I can add more contrast. So really cool. Now this is all global. This is before I'm using control points and saturation structure, shadow. We have a warmth adjustment here. So if we want to warm the whole image off, we can warm it here or we could cool it down by moving it to the left. So some really nice adjustments in here. And then these adjustments, red, green, and blue can come in really handy. And we also have a hue adjustment, which is really powerful. I'm not going to get into the hue adjustment today, but that's super cool. And I'll show you that on another video. And then you have these two icons here. And if I hover over this, it says collapse all sliders. E key is a shortcut. And the other one is expand all sliders. E key. So, so if we collapse the sliders, we're just seeing the basic sliders here. Brightness, contrast, saturation, and structure. If you want to see everything that you can adjust with, just uncollapse it. And you'll see all the other adjustments come up here. And there's a reset button here as well. And your control points, anytime you add a control point, they're going to live in here. And again, your curves are down here. And you can do an RGB curve, or you can work with your different colors, red, green, or blue. So that's nice. And again, your loop is down here. Now, to add a control point, you'll click on control point and say we want to make the sky darker. So let's click, let's say right here, we'll click and add a control point. Let's examine this uh, control point very briefly here. See this first slider right here? I'm going to drag it to the right. See that circle? 
that's called the circle of influence. Now, what's ever inside that circle is going to be affected by my adjustment. Now, it's it's looking at different things like textures and and colors and uh, luminosity and things like that. It's very, very uh, elaborate uh, engineering here by the Nick Software engineers, okay? So if I hold my command key down, now I am on a Mac machine, so I'm not sure which key you would hold down to see this on a Windows machine. It could be the control key, but I'm really not sure. If you know, please leave that in the comment section below. That'll help people out. Anyway, I'm going to hold my command key down and watch this. This is really cool. This is a little trick a lot of people don't know about. You can actually see your layer mask if you hold your command key down. And you can see the area that's being affected. Now, whatever is light is going to be affected. Whatever is dark is not going to be affected. So I like to do this just to get an idea of what's going to be affected. So I think that's a good section or a good area to affect right now. Now, I want to affect the entire sky. But let me start out by taking this brightness control, and I want to darken that sky up a little bit, just a little wee bit, maybe somewhere around there, and maybe give it a little extra saturation, okay? And uh, I'm going to use this other uh, slider down here. See the R, G, and B, B for blue? If I drag this to the right, it'll make that a little more blue. If I drag it to the left, it'll make it yellow. The opposite of blue is yellow, so... Once I'm at zero, I'm not adding any extra blue, but if I move it to the right, I'm going to add a little extra blue to that sky and only the sky. Okay. Now, if I want to uh, affect the other parts of the sky, which I do, if I hold the option key down on this control point and see that little plus or see that little plus comes up there, hold that option key down and left click with my mouse and drag, I can copy that control point and kind of like drag it out like so. Then I can do it again, hold it down again. It's probably Alt on a PC, but I'm going to hold my Option, click, and drag, and pull it over into here. But just like that, I've affected my entire sky. You see that? And then we can click this preview here and see the before and after. Or else you can do like a uh, top and bottom view. If you click this icon in the center, you can do a side-by-side -side view, which is really nice. Or you could do the... Uh, split screen wiper view here which i like this as well so really cool stuff where you can do the single view by clicking this here and then if you want to see the before before and after just click the uh, preview checkbox here so that's how far we've come so far by darkening darkening the sky and we've done some global adjustments now we can also take these control points here and group them so i'm just going to click and drag with my mouse that little bounding box over these and i've selected all three of these control points now i can come up here to group and click group and now I can use this adjustment bar here and make all of my adjustment adjustments and it will affect each and every one of the control points that are inside of this group. Or I could come over here and notice I have an active control point. This used to say global, now it says selective right here. But now I can control the uh, brightness here and, and it's only going to affect the sky. I could give it a little extra contrast. Okay, which is only going to affect the sky. Now, it may bleed into some of these other areas here, but you could do something called a negative control point, and that would be just take a regular control point, and like I could click one right here. Let's grab another one, click it here, and that'll just protect what's ever happening up here to not happen down here, if that makes sense. Now, let me show you how we can see the effect of just that one control point group. So let's come over to control point list and notice all your control points live here if i take group one and uh click this checkbox there's a before and there's the after but you see it's only affecting the sky pretty cool right so this will really come in handy for you all your control points will live in here and you can shut them off and turn them on just to see what they're doing for you which is nice by the way, this editing process is really fast and easy as the name of the video states, but I'm explaining things so it's taking a little bit longer. So now let's speed things up a little bit. Let's grab another control point. Say I want to darken the shadows in these mountains. So I'm going to take one control point and darken the mountains a little bit right there. I'm going to steal the control point by holding the option key down and dragging it to another shadow area. Okay. And maybe grab some of the shadow areas down in this area right here, just like that. Alrighty. And again, I can take these uh, shadow areas and put a bounding box around them like so. Let's put those in a group. And now let's adjust 
the brightness, say if I want them to be a little bit lighter and maybe add a little bit of structure to them. Again, I could be controlling the adjustments over here, but a lot of times I just like to use these adjustments over here. And so we add a little bit of structure to the mountain there, which is really cool. And, uh, you know, if we wanted to warm them up a little bit, we could warm them up just a little wee tiny bit. Okay, very cool. And now let's see, this area right here might be a little too light for me, so let me grab another control point. Let's place it right here, and I'm going to hold my command key down and drag the slider here and see what area is being affected. That area right there is being affected. And now uh, let me just take my brightness control and just pull it back just a little bit. Yeah, just a tiny little bit. And uh, this area right here, maybe I want to darken it. So I'm going to hold the option key down and just drag this over to here, and that'll darken that area. A little bit and if I wanted to make this area right here a little more on the green side I could take the green right here drag it to the right and just add a little bit of green in here okay and the opposite of green would be magenta so but I just want to add a little bit of green in there because it looks a little brown and I want to bring a little bit of green to kind of match this grass up in here okay so that's looking pretty cool so far and I might just want to lighten up the grass up in here a little bit. So let's grab another control point. I'm going to put a mark right there. A mark. What am I calling it a mark? A control point, Dave, not a mark. Okay, I get it. I'll add a little bit of brightness here. Look at that. Just a little bit of brightness. How about a little bit of structure? Yeah, a little bit of structure is nice. And again, I can adjust here or over here. It doesn't really matter. Let me grab this, hold the option key down. I'm going to steal this control point. So why work twice as hard? Oh, I didn't show you, by the way. Whenever you've got a control point, whenever you move it around, if you watch this loop area here, see my uh, cursor here? Wherever you move a control point, you'll be able to see where you want to place that control point. In other words, this control point, see that little crosshatch? I could say I want to place it precisely right on this little light area right here so I can place it precisely. I forgot to show you what that was all about. Now, remember, I stole this control point from here, so it's affecting it the same way. Now, I could throw these two in a group if I wanted to. And let's make a group. So click on group here. And again, we can adjust them brighter or darker. Whatever we want. I, like I said, I want it a little bit brighter. but uh, And I already added structure to it, and I like that. But say, what if I wanted to warm that grass up a little bit? I could take this warmth here and just warm it a little bit. So isn't that cool? And right there, I'm really happy with it. So let's see. Here is my before, and here's my after, all with the power of Vivesa. Now, remember, you're in your control list over here. You can uh, click on and off these groups and see how they're affecting your image. So you can play with all these control points and see what they're doing. Here's group two affecting the mountains and group one is affecting the sky. So there you go. So remember, you have global adjustments. When you're doing global, it's going to say global. And it'll say global whenever you don't have a control point selected. Okay, so you can do global adjustments or control points pretty cool stuff and don't forget you have a curve here i'll show you that in another video and if you're satisfied with all of your adjustments i'm just going to come down here and click ok and that'll send us right back into photoshop and let me uh minimize this right here so here we go here is my before and here's my after my vivesa 2 adjustment so give that a try or if you haven't used it in a while pull it back out because man i'll tell you what it is a time saver Vivesa 2 is such a remarkable piece of software. One of the best in the industry, if you ask me. You know, I love uh, luminosity masking, but this is kind of like luminosity masking made very, very simple. There's some things you can do in luminosity masking that you can't do with Vivesa 2, but uh, you know what? Vivesa 2 can pretty much do everything luminosity masks can do, but a lot quicker. 
So it's really nice. Well, there you go, everyone. Nick Vivesa, it'll really help you in speeding up your editing workflow. Now, the Nick collection is on sale, as I said at the beginning of the tutorial. Uh, you get eight different plugins, and they're all fantastic. It's normally $149, and uh, DxO has updated it. You get a bunch of new recipes and presets and things like that in it. It's really cool. This is the 25th anniversary edition uh you're going to get it for half price just click on my affiliate link in the description below it says nick collection click on that that'll take you right there you can purchase it i'll make a small commission it helps me out and i want to thank you in advance if you do that it's a great piece of software if you enjoyed this tutorial today please give it a like and share it with your friends if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel please subscribe and don't forget to click the bell notification icon